Hello, and welcome to this video on trigonometry. So in the previous videos, we had discussed radians and understanding the unit of radians and how they relate to degrees. So by now, you should have a full understanding of how to convert between the two units. However, I believe it is important to continue practicing radians so that you can get to the point of visualizing a radian without even having to convert it to degrees. So in this video, I want to go back into determining which quadrant the terminal side of an angle is in. But this time, we're going to focus on angles in radians. So as we said before, radians is just another unit of angles. When we talk about angles in this class, we talk about angles in standard position, which means that we have our initial side on the positive x-axis and the terminal side rotates. Now, it can rotate in two directions, counterclockwise or clockwise. So let's take, for example, this angle here. This angle is going to be pi over 4 radians, or 45 degrees. So notice that this angle was formed by rotating the terminal side in a counterclockwise direction. Now, if we would have moved the same angle, but this time in a counterclockwise direction, yes, this angle is still 45 degrees, or pi over 4 radians. However, because the angle was formed by rotating clockwise, this is actually negative pi over 4 radians. So, just like degrees, radians can also be negative as well. So just to review all the quadrants in a rectangular coordinate. If our terminal side is rotating in a counterclockwise direction, we're going to build this up in radians. So first, we start at 0 radians. Then, Going in a counterclockwise direction, we come to pi over 2 radians. Then we move another pi over, pi over 2 radians, leaving us at pi radians. We continue another pi over 2, or another 90 degrees, and we get 3 pi over 2 radians. And finally, we move to our final, to our ending point, which is going to be 2 pi radians. Notice... Quadrant 1 is any angle between 0 and pi over 2. Quadrant 2 is any angle between pi over 2 and pi. Quadrant 3 is any angle between pi and 3 pi over 2. And quadrant 4 is any angle between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. But remember, the terminal side can also move in the clockwise direction. So let's say that we're going to move clockwise instead. So starting from 0, we're going to go to minus pi over 2 radians. Then we move again, we go to minus pi radians. Then we go to minus 3 pi over 2 radians. And finally, we end up at minus 2 pi radians. So notice how we can move um, in a clockwise direction as well. But instead, when we move in a clockwise direction, our angles are going to be negative. So, from 0 to negative pi over 2, we're in quadrant 4. From negative pi over 2 to negative pi, we are in quadrant 3. From negative pi to negative 3 pi over 2, we are in quadrant 2. And from negative 3 pi over 2 to negative 2 pi, we are in quadrant 1. So, let's focus on this problem here. Determine the quadrant that the terminal side of 2 pi over 3 radians is located in. So, there are a few different methods to do this. One method is to actually just convert the angle to degrees, which then makes it a little bit easier to visualize. So, if we want to convert 2 pi over 3 radians to degrees, like we talked about in the previous video, we can either multiply by 180 degrees over pi radians, or, easier yet, 
we can just think of 2 pi over 3 as 2 times pi over 3 radians. That means this angle is pi over 3 radians, which is 60 degrees, twice. So this just means 2 times 60 degrees, which is 120 degrees. So 120 degrees, if we visualize that, is right here in quadrant number 2. So the answer is quadrant 2. The alternative method would be actually to skip the step of actually converting it to degrees and just focus to this step. So if you understand that 2 pi over 3 radians is just pi over 3 radians twice, that means you are moving 60 degrees twice. So if you want to, you can visualize this by graphing it and just say, I'm going to move 60 degrees twice. So 1, 2. And notice that places me right there in quadrant number 2. And it's the same exact angle. This time you actually didn't have to convert it to degrees, but you can still kind of visualize exactly where that angle would be located. Let's do another one. Okay, so in this problem, we want to determine the quadrant that the terminal side of 7 pi over 6 radians is located. So, if we want to do it the quick method, well, we can actually relate 7 pi over 6 radians to just being 7 times pi over 6 radians. You see, this means that we are moving pi over 6 radians 7 times, or 30 degrees 7 times. So if it, if it makes sense, notice you could move pi over 6 6 times, and that would create one, full, one half revolution. With one additional one over, we'd get then 30 degrees over 180. So let's go ahead and, and graph that here real quickly. So we want to move 30 degrees, or pi over 6, 7 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. See, notice 6 times 30 is 180. And then we move one additional over. One additional 30 degrees over. And that places us right here in quadrant number 3. You see, using this method, there is no need for a calculator. You do not actually have to calculate the angle in degrees. It's kind of easy to just break it apart into smaller angles and figure out how many times you need to move. But if you do have a calculator on hand, might as well just convert it to degrees. There's no problem with that. You can just say that this is 7 times 30 degrees, which ends up being 210 degrees, which is, again, the same exact angle, which places us right there in quadrant number three. So again, there are multiple different ways of approaching this. Uh, my personal favorite is to just break it down into a simple angle and just count how many times you need to move that certain angle. So here we had to move 30 degrees seven times, placing us right there. Or you could just go ahead and convert it to degrees and calculate which quadrant is. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You are getting the same answer at the end. So in this problem here, I am introducing uh, the negative. This just means we're going to move 3 pi over 4 radians in a clockwise direction. That's all that means. So negative 3 pi over 4, this just means negative 3 times pi over 4 radians. So what that means is I want to move 45 degrees, or pi over 4, three times in a clockwise direction. So, 1, 2, 3. You see? I moved 45 degrees three times in a clockwise direction. And that places me right here in quadrant 3. Alternatively, you could have just actually done the math and converted that and done minus 3 times 45, which would have been negative 135 degrees, which once again would have placed us in quadrant 3. 
Okay, the last type of problem that you may encounter is when you get an angle in radians that does not refer to one of the special angles that you are encouraged to memorize. So in this case here, 4 pi over 5 radians. You can kind of break this down as 4 over 4 times pi over 4 radians. However, pi over 5 is not a special angle. However, what I do know is that pi over 5 is a fifth of 180. So that means I can fit 5 of these, 5 of pi over 5, because 5 times pi over 5 is pi, is one, full, is one half revolution. So I can kind of already determine that this is going to be an angle that's less than 180. So let's see if we can figure this out. This means we want to move pi over 5 four times. Again, we can fit 5 pi over 5s in half a revolution. So that would mean something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You see? That's half a revolution broken up into five equal segments. So four of these would place us right here, as you see. This shows us that we moved pi over 5 four times, placing us right here in quadrant number 2. Alternatively, you can just go ahead and find the angle in degrees. This is the alternative method, where you could just say that this is four times. Well, uh, a fifth of 180 is 36. So this would end up just being 144 degrees, which again is an angle in the second quadrant. So go ahead and try to determine which quadrant the terminal side of these angles given to you as in radians is located in. Again, you can use any method you like. You can either count the number of times you need to move a certain angle, or you can just go ahead and convert to degrees using a calculator. Either method works, so try to figure out which method works best for you. Do them both if that helps. So pause this video, attempt to do the problems, and when you come back, the answers will show up in a few seconds. And there you have it. These are the quadrants that these angles are located in. Notice the last one would have been the biggest challenge because because pi over 4 is not a conventional special angle that you need to have memorized. However, you could have figured this out in multiple different ways. So the last thing that I want to talk about in this video is to introduce this thing to you called the unit circle. It is relevant in trigonometry, and you will see it show up multiple times. But it's a very simple concept. All the unit circle is, is a circle whose radius is one unit long. So the length of the radius here is one unit long. Now, what does that mean? That means that can be any unit of length. This circle can be a circle with radius one inch, or it could be a circle of radius one foot, or one centimeter, or one mile. It doesn't matter the unit, just as long as the radius is one of any unit of distance. That is what the unit circle is. Now I want to just, using the special, so using the special angles that we have already determined, I actually want to build up the entire unit circle with all our special angles. These are angles that show up almost everywhere. So let's go ahead and build this up. So we're going to work with positive angles here. 
Negative angles is the same thing, again, just going in a clockwise direction. So we first start with zero degrees or zero radians, same thing. Then we go to 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. Then we go to 180 degrees or pi radians. Then we go here to 270 degrees or 3 pi over 2 radians. And last but not least, we go to 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. So these angles break the circle up into four different quadrants. Quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, using our special angles, let's see how this breaks apart. So let's first break this circle up into eighths by breaking each quadrant up in half. Okay, so notice here how now we've broken this up into eighths. And notice each segment here, each slice, is going to be 45 degrees. So to start off with here, we go with 45 degrees. Or pi over 4 radians. We move 45 degrees again, and we get to 90 degrees. Or you could think of it as 2 times pi over 4 that's going to be pi over 2. Now we move 45 degrees one more time. Or you could think of it as we moved 45 degrees three times, which would be 135 degrees, or 3 pi over 4 radians. You see here, this means we moved 45 degrees three times. 1, 2, 3. We move th uh, pi over 4 again, and we get 4 pi over 4, or pi radians, or 180 degrees. Then we move pi over 4 again. This would have been the fifth time that we move pi over 4 radians. And that would end up being 180 plus 45, same thing, which is 225 degrees. We move again, we get to 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2, we move again pi over 4, and this is the seventh time that we moved pi over 4 radians, which is the same thing as 315 degrees. And there we go. We've now broken this up. And then the last angle, 360, would be 8 pi over 4, or you could just think of that as 2 pi. Now, let's go ahead and break this um, up now into twelfths. So, meaning, let's break each quadrant up into thirds. Okay, so the first angle here in green would be 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians. Again, that's like a 6 of 180. So if you notice, you could fit 6 of these green um, slices into half a revolution. So now we move over again. We move pi over 6 twice. But 2 pi over 6 simplifies to pi over 3. Correct? So, sorry, this is 30 degrees. Here, this would be pi over 3 radians, or 60 degrees. You see, this, uh, 60 degrees is just 30 degrees twice. So 2 pi over 6 simplifies to pi over 3. Then we move again. This green here, this one here, is the fourth time that we move pi over 6. But however, 4 pi over 6 simplifies to 2 pi over 3. So you could think of this as that you move 60 degrees twice to get there. Many different ways to think about it. 
or the same thing as 120 degrees. This here is going to be the fifth time that we moved 60 degrees. So this is 5 pi over 6. Right? This is the fifth time that we moved 30 degrees, okay? which is going to also be 150 degrees. Okay. This angle here, this one right here, that is the um, seventh time that we moved pi over 6 radians, or 30 degrees. So this would be 7 pi over 6 radians, or 180 plus 30, which would be 210 degrees. This angle right here, this one is going to be the eighth time we move pi over 6, or 30 degrees. But this does simplify to 4 pi over 3 radians. Again, you could also think of this as the fourth time that we moved 60 degrees. That Alternatively, that's another way to think about it. And that would be 240 degrees. And then we move 30 degrees again, we end up at 270. So the next angle after 270 is going to be the 10th time that we moved 30 degrees. But that does simplify to 5 pi over 3. So again, you could also think of this as the fifth time that we moved that we moved 60 degrees. Or we could also think of this as 300 degrees. And last but not least, the last angle in green is going to be the 11th time that we moved 30 degrees which would also be 330 degrees. So as you see here, you don't necessarily have to memorize this because this is pretty easy to, to break apart. The whole purpose of showing you guys this is just to show you that you can break this up into different slices depending on how you want to do it. This may help you in visualizing how to determine where a radian is located. I hope this helped. This is not necessarily super important. We're going to see the unit circle again a little bit in the future, but I just wanted to break down this concept and show you guys an example of how we can break apart a circle using all the special angles that we have learned already. So that's going to wrap it up for this lesson. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.